Hi there, Gonzo, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, so my name is Gonzalo Schwind. Um I normally use this uh, nickname for uh, Deus Ex Lumina, which is called Dell, and I am the singer and the music producer of Deus Ex Lumina. I s once, uh, it's like my solo project, um, so I am the only person basically right now <laughs> uh, working on this. Well, it's a fantastic sound you've got. God, oh, thank you so much. That really yeah. came up as a surprise because I hadn't heard of you before. And then when I did hear mm -hmm. it, I thought, wow, this is actually really good. I want to talk thank to you. this guy. It's really good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm <laughs> glad yeah. that you that you like it. Yeah, it is really good. Um, where did you come up with the name? Oh, um, so maybe some of the fans also will remember this, but at the very beginning of the project, this was not at all dark wave. It was a dark ambient, actually. So this project grew from the, um, let's say, the very niche subculture of dark ambient. And little by little, I, start, I started to add more and more electronic things to it and to make it a little bit more dark wavy sort of saying thing and then everything just transform from them and and um the name is is in latin and it means the a god that comes from the light this is what it means um yeah which is uh, kind of combining i don't know if you know deus ex machina Yes, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but instead of machina in this case is kind of coming from from the light, which is a little bit has more to do with the Renaissance and uh, the, this historical background that is very, very Gothic, I find. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, yeah. it's a very good name and a really cool name. Really <laughs> Thank <is>. you. <laughs> yeah. So what's your background in music? Um, so I studied music actually in Germany. I went to the university here and I graduated as a music producer. And then immediately I started to work for the TV and for video games also here in Germany, um, making music for shows, uh, trailers, uh, some short movies also and, and video games. And my main instrument actually is um, drums. So mm -hmm. I was also playing in different um, post-punk bands, but always as a drummer and some metal bands also. And and then at the end, I just decided to go for... Oh, you paused. My solo project and then producing many. Really good, well worth it as well. Really, really good. And yeah, what influences your music? Um, I would say um, huge influence from Depeche Mode and One, and specifically the early EBM. You know, like from Two for Two and all all the classics that everybody probably know and and mm. and like. Uh, so those are my big, big influence. And of course, Blood Engel, a lot of people say that sometimes my voice sounds like <laughs> the one from him. Um, yeah, so there is also some influence there, um, specifically because in Buenos Aires, we also have like a Gothic subculture there. It's not as big as in Germany. In Germany is huge. You have it everywhere. There is Gothic parties every weekend. You have like clubs yeah. for it. It's crazy here. Um, festivals also and and so on um but in buenos aires when i was a teenager there there were not so many um events related to it so the majority of the um, music that i was consuming was the it, it came from online radios basically from germany actually and mm -hmm. and then it's how i got um a, a little bit of yeah this influence from from all these old bands because this was already like 20 years ago yeah, and i was lucky because my i have a sister that is older than me and she was in goth before so she kind of also introduced me into it <laughs> and then yeah 
Oh, that's good. I couldn't stop listening to it or getting away from the from the subculture anymore. I just loved it. It's a great blend, isn't it? There's so many different parts yeah. to it, and any any parts can combine to make music, and it just sounds yeah. so good. Whichever parts you put together, it just goes. Yeah, it's true, and and I think also the good part that the gothic subculture in general has is like it is not only music. Of course, it's a music-based subculture, but there is so much um, literature also yes. next to it, and that also plays along and contributes to the lyrics and to the aesthetics and the feeling in general. This atmosphere, you know. The, it is. Yeah, it is a great and I love it. culture. It is yeah. a great yeah. culture. One, yeah. one of the better ones, I think. And I think I think that's the reason why it exists still, right? It's like it it doesn't die. And I also right now I see like there's like a big comeback somehow. Yeah, more than ever, um, I think now. Yeah, also in pop, although they don't call themselves gods, but if you listen to Billie Eilish, you know. You can yeah. feel the, the the elements of of gothic music there, and even the the styles of makeup coming out now, even 100%. in like said, the pop, it's more gothic style than yeah. the normal style yeah. as you could call it from what used to be. It's going along that gothic line. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So it's really, yeah. although it might not be the same, it's being influenced by. The yeah, for sure. Culture. Yeah, for sure. Yes. For so sure. more people are getting to like it, and I think there's a lot of groups that have done a lot to help that along. I think a lot of bands have helped that. Um, yeah. Some more mainstream, I guess. I mean, I don't know if you want to call it gothic emo or whatever, but things like mm -hmm. My Chemical Romance. Yeah, for sure. They went yes. mainstream and pushed it that way a little bit. Um, yeah, it's true. There's another band I can't remember their name offhand. Um, good Charlotte. There's Good Charlotte. Um, there's the guy yeah. with Billy. What's his name? Billy. Oh, he's he's really uh, quite loud and uh, doesn't okay. like. He he did a concert where they gave him a few minutes left, and he said, "Who do you think I am?" Oh, really? Bieber. Yeah, he said, "I'm <laughs> not Justin Bieber." He said two minutes. Oh, now I've only got a minute left. Oh, now I can go. Okay. And he just broke his guitar and off he went. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Quite yeah. dramatic. He was very dramatic. I mean, he's a nice guy <laughs> normally, but he just lost it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Groups, I suppose, even like Ramstein. There's a metal also. there's a metal part, but there's also the darker side, even the makeup, the looks. Mm-hmm. All yeah, being influenced, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Um, listening to your music, um, what made you choose "My Church Is Black"? That is so good. Your version, <laughs> oh, it's yeah, so good. Um, yeah, um, that's a good question. I think also one of my biggest influence is Behemoth, you know, and Adam Darsky, which is the the singer and the, yeah. the composer, and also from. Um, me and that man um i always wanted to cover that song because it's one of my favorite from his solo project and yeah we just went for it i didn't know at the beginning if this would work because the um the genres are a little bit like apart from from each other like southern goth music and what i do which is a little bit more electronic so i didn't know how this will play together but then I just went for it, and at the end, it kind of made sense somehow. I was going um, to ask yeah. you, how did you think that this was going to work? But it did, and it worked really well. I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just figured that um, when I was composing the instrumental for it, I noticed the limitations of when you're working with electronic music, there are some, uh, yeah, just mainly some things that you cannot get from this or some some feelings that you cannot produce that much in comparison to when you have something like an acoustic guitar you know like this this warmth that these like the, these acoustic things have it's very difficult to replicate that with the with the electronic music so i knew at the beginning that this is gonna be something very different um uh, in terms of how how it feels and then 
from the structure of the song, I also noticed that I will need to come up with some sort of um, yeah, electronic chorus that makes sense. And, and I figure that if I don't sing in that part and then just make it like a more electronic in terms of my church is black and then the thing blows up. Yeah. That probably makes the 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 effect that that I was um, wishing to have, which is something that takes away, let's say, the elements and the um, um, concept of a song that is more on the acoustic side, and then you bring into the goth dance floor, and then you make it explode there. So this is how how I wanted to work with it, and it did. It worked really well really yeah, thank you <laughs> love that version and another one of my favorites has got to be um oh black road the black road yeah yeah what's the idea behind that song yes so i'm a very big fan of carl Jung, which is one of the i would say uh one of the earliest psychologists that we have. He was a student from um, uh, Freud. And what he did was mixing the esoteric part of the, I would say, the, es the Renaissance esoteric thing, which is very Gothic also. It's what influenced the Gothic, um, I would say, even kind of, if you want to, if you want to uh, talk about um the religion of the gothic subculture yeah. would say i would say there is esoteric esotericism that came from the renaissance and this is what it is alive yet that's why we still use the the young you know like the yeah. egyptian mark and all of this um so uh carl jung talks a lot about this and kind of brings together um spirituality science and psychology um in in a very good artistic mix i would say and this song is um influenced by one of the theories he has which is um about the shadow theory he talks about that we all have this other side of our personality like, like this shadow that we have he he call it shadow and in order for us to be complete to be a whole let's let's say, um, we need to embrace it. We need to understand it and to pay attention to it. And then by combining yourself, your ego, let's say, and this shadow, yeah. then you become what, what you really are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. One. Yeah. So this well, is the, the foundation of, of the lyrics. Um, well, yeah. and, and the video I work with, um, Jay Deathray, which is a huge influencer in TikTok also um so we have a conversation and we came up with the idea of okay let's make um a video together and then she was taking some some takes and normally they um when i work with influencers or with other uh, act, act, actors or models yeah. they send me the stuff and then i also kind of try to edit it myself so it is kind of a very um do it yourself project deus ex lumina at all like yeah. when when I work with other artists or um, with other um, engineers and so on, it's always like we come together, we came up with ideas, and then we all work, you know? There is no external agency or anybody that we pay. It's just the work of uh, all of us. But then when we put all this together, kind of makes sense, and then we see how the people react. That's, that's the most uh, yeah, amazing thing. That's really good. That's really good. And I love your yeah. latest track as well, No Control. Mm -hmm. That's another good one. Um, yeah, thank you. You've really come out with some really good tracks, haven't you? <laughs> um, the, the thing is, um, I think that the music industry changed a little bit, specifically for um, the way that people consume music nowadays. Mm -hmm. And of course, the sub the um the goth subculture kind of escaped from this because it's what the technology or how the technology is influencing us and the way that we consume um content let's say so i figure that if, when you are not 
so known still um, as a as an emerging artist, let's say, mm. it's very difficult to keep or to hold the attention of people for a very very long time. So even if I have an album that is completely finished with let's say 10, 12 songs that that maybe is one hour, if I released all of this at once. I don't think it would have the same effect or the same reach as if I release song month per month. And that's a little bit sad in a way because I I I'm still one of those people that listens to full albums, you know? Yeah. But I know that it is very difficult nowadays specifically with the algorithms of YouTube music, Spotify, Apple Music working in that sense that they are feeding you, you know, like little snacks with things that, that you like. And the only way to access this in a um, constant, uh, let's say, pattern or rhythm, it is by releasing the, the album as if it would be content, you know, yeah, I get it. for those specific platforms. So in you would need you can, as an artist, as, as a musician, you can create the full album as I did, but then you need to think yourself as a content creator. So I have the album now, I have the content. How should I now release this content so it doesn't get lost in the huge and massive yeah. Um, yeah, cloud of things that are uh, happening every second, you know, because there is many musicians releasing every minute all the time, probably. Yeah, all the, all the time, time all the yeah. time so yeah in order to get noticed it's a little bit of that and then full collaboration with people that already have access to the audience much more than you as an artist that's why i work a lot with influencers um i work a lot with yami which is the um, the owner of the youtube channel yami specie yeah that i i had the I was lucky and I met him and then he was in Berlin. We had a couple of years together. He is actually what we call kind of a, a lot of musicians. We, um, we agree on the, on the, on this term that he's kind of like a, a blessing for the subculture because the, the channel he has is so big, you know, he has so many followers and then, he releases music from new artists and then from one day to another, you have like a fan base. It's incredible just because the reach that that channel has now, nowadays. So he helped me a lot also. And I think part of the success of Deus Ex Lumina and I see the numbers going up every week, which is crazy. is also partly on, on him and all the other influencers, artists, the, um, girls from Nictophilia also um that's they also released um some videos with dark you know the the band dark yeah uh, yeah so it seems that we are all kind of working in that in that circle we like we know uh, yeah, each other I, and then we collaborate and then we help each other's project also all the time i'd never thought it's of beautiful. it that way but you've made that really make sense now yeah yeah your vocals are very, very deep. Yes. Compared to how you talk. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, that's I get incredible that a lot. How deep <laughs> you sing. I mean, it is really yes. deep. It's great vocals. I mean, it's really deep. Proper yeah. dark deep, isn't it? It really <laughs> is. Yes, yes. Um yeah, uh, I get that a lot. And sometimes I need to explain like everybody can do this. Anyway, like everybody can sing deep, right? It's just like you vocalize and try to sing deep as you could also sing very high and you don't need to speak super high all the time. Um, and of course, I cannot do this with every scale, let's say, no. but there are some specific scales uh, that I can work with and still um, speak in a lower voice <laughs> and then get to 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 sing, let's say. And that's that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of a lot of technique, and then also a lot of uh, post production in 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 music. Let's say yeah. that uh, the voice has also distortion, and sometimes um, very different 
um, layers of voice. Like I sing one phrase, I re-sing it maybe four, five times more, then put them together, use compressors to make this a little bit more fat, you know, add on this, uh, let's say, new audio uh, file, now distortion on top, and then all of this together is creating this um, wow. more, I, I would say, deep goth feeling in, in the voice, you know. Yeah. And it, yeah. it really does come across well. Really does come across yeah. well. <laughs> cool. Glad like to hear. Any, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always <laughs> good to to compliment people when they're doing something really well. So, have you got any tours or live gigs coming up? Um, not yet. I got invited to a lot uh, festivals and tours in Europe, in Eastern Europe, in the US, in Texas, also wow. some gigs there. But I. I really don't have enough songs to make a, sh a one hour show at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that's, uh, that's my big issue. So I'm postponing this for next year, but I am already talking, um, with some organizers of events. So next year I will be, uh, for sure being much more out there than this year and with, yeah, much more songs also. Um, to play some that are published and I will still play some songs that are not published yet. Um, but yeah, this is how, how it works right now, <laughs> mainly yeah, focusing yeah. on the fans and my activity online goal for 2023, take this to the, to the real world, let's say to the real world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I also have many people writing me constantly like when can i see you live anywhere like even in germany or in berlin you know and i'm still not not ready for it no no yeah. you're not the first band to yeah. say that to, to me you know there, there's quite a few artists out there that say the same thing you know they haven't got enough yeah to put on a, yeah. a whole show yet exactly um, yes and they will and I when just, they're ready yeah and i just don't want to um do a show that is just me with a microphone and singing, you know? So I'm working with other uh, people that understand a little bit better of stage design and all of this. So when I go out there, it's a show. And yeah. the people that, that, that is worth it to see. It's not just me with a microphone and singing that maybe would be okay anyways, but I want to keep to the crowd a little bit more than that. Yeah. So, so you can be, you know, Oh, we saw them the other day and he was brilliant. And that's yeah. what we want to see. It was a great show as well. You know, the music was great, but the show was great. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Because I, if I also think of the most memorable concerts that I went, part was the music, but the other part is also how they present this in this constellation or in this setup, you know, which is the very different from being in the studio recording and singing and having a lot of people in front of you um to pay the ticket for it and they are waiting to to see what you have to to yeah. to offer there i would say yeah they want a show don't they exactly yeah they at the end show. at the end it is a show <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i've yeah. seen i've seen uh cost concerts where there's several several bands playing and you go to see the headline band Mm -hmm. The other bands are all a bonus. And then you go come out yeah. and for, uh, it can be for years later. You're thinking, but that band was brilliant. And it was not the headline band. It was another band that had the best show overall. Yeah, exactly. Do you yeah. remember that? That's the bit that sticks in your head. Yeah. 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 And so, it doesn't necessarily need to be like a super huge thing, you know, No. but pay attention to it and give some thoughts on how to make the, the things work you you don't need to wait to be signed by a super huge label you know to have this entertaining exactly. show or something that is new uh, or experiment you can also express your art in other ways yeah on top of the music right exactly it can yeah. be quite it can be quite simple but effective yeah exactly it yeah. doesn't have to all be i don't know ramstein Exactly. Extend, you know. <laughs> Fire everywhere, explosions. <laughs> See it for yeah. miles away, the sky lighting up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The black I mean, smoke. Okay, they, 
they've got the they've obviously got the budget their marketing budget yeah, is course. huge but yeah <laughs> but for other people it it doesn't have to be yeah on that scale yeah, as long yeah. as it's memorable people don't mind people yeah. don't mind i agree and um, what's next for you um well now i'm writing new songs uh because the ones that i have planned already uh goes it goes until the plan that i have it goes until i think june and then i don't have any more songs at the moment like the album that i made it would be all released yeah so now slowly i'm start um starting to record again and compose so i am in the middle of it right now actually it was composing before this interview <laughs> i was uh, already uh, coming up with some bass lines um and yeah that's pretty much it and for sure playing live next year that would be fantastic yeah is there anything else you'd like to mention that i haven't um maybe it's just to uh, say thank you to the people that is supporting me like since years you know like i al i always dreamed to work with music or in the music industry and to be able to express my art in the form of of music um at the beginning i thought that this was impossible to be honest i thought that this this is something that you know yeah for other other people not me yeah. like how can this little guy from Buenos Aires, you know, make some some bands and some projects that could be relevant for anybody else? And now it's like a big surprise, and I'm super thankful because all of these reactions and the messages that I get, they are daily. Like every day I get either a comment there, here and there, or a message directly on, I don't know, Facebook or Instagram with people really cheering me up and and wanting wanting to know what um what's coming and and more about the the music and the project um and this is incredible and I'm super super thankful so for I was just wanted to say thank you to to all the people that is supporting Dios Ex Lumina um I'm mesmerized still by by the amount of support I'm getting every day. That is brilliant. There are quite, a, there's quite, just to add, there is quite a few um, artists and bands coming out of South America now. That are yeah, I, I think so. Getting a lot, lot more mainstream and not mainstream as in pop, but yeah, yeah. in our, in our sort of form of music, it's, there's mm -hmm. more coming out. I mean, there's, there's egg van from Mexico. Is it Hochico? Mm -hmm. Hochico? They've come out of Mexico, and then obviously there's yourself, and these are all really, really good. It's yeah, all good music, really good music. There is there is one band that I uh, love hundred percent, which comes also from Argentina, and it's called Blood Parade. So if you don't know it yet, or anybody that is listening to this, Google Blood Parade. Um, they are from Argentina and they exist since 20 years almost. They make uh, industrial music, um, goth industrial, and they are incredibly good. Incredibly good. I just don't know why they are not so much known outside of Buenos Aires or Argentina, uh, but they are at the level of any other very big industrial band. Wow. I'll have so, to listen to Blood, that as well. Blood Parade, yeah. Yeah, I will definitely have a listen to that. Definitely. Yeah. Well, Gonza, it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you and really nice to meet you. Um, great music, great guy. Just keep going and uh, you'll get there for sure. I mean, it is just such great music. So thank you, you so much. Success. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mike. Um, and I'm very grateful also for that you um, contact me for this interview. Um, no problem. Just thank you.